I've got something super cool to show you. It's in this bag. This is a camera from my grandpa. This particular model was released in 1951. I love to take pictures and I'd like to think that I've taken some pretty good pictures in my lifetime. For example, Those pictures that I've taken are pretty good, but they were also really easy to take. And I think oftentimes we forget how hard it was to take a picture even 30 years ago. This camera I'm filming on has optical stabilization. It has stabilization in the body. You can see the picture that you're taking. Now I can take a photo and if the lighting isn't good, I can look at that photo and adjust the lighting on my camera. But even if I don't adjust the lighting on my camera, I can go back later and edit the photo and make it look really good. This is a picture of a hawk that I took. It's okay, but after editing it, it's a pretty good photo. I'm only 23 years old. All of the cameras I have used in my lifetime have been digital. And I know I probably have a lot of older people watching who are laughing at me. I really, really, ooh. I really, really want to learn how to use this thing. Fortunately, this camera comes with a manual. Even better, I don't have to read this because we can go talk to the guy that bought this way back in the 1950s, my grandpa. I was wondering if you remember this at all. Oh, yes. Yeah? Yeah, how'd you end up with that? Well, Gordon gave it to me, Uncle Gordon. I would just keep all my camera stuff in here. Well, what's inside of it now? I don't know. Maybe it's stuff that Gordon had. It looks like it's been through the World War. Oh, it's, hey, oh. Oh, this is my, this is my camera and that telephoto lens, and this is what I took all my slides with that I have. I remember this, my goodness. I. I have a whole mess of slides that this is what I used on my mission and in the service and, the, and everything. So you have pictures that you've taken with this then? I have slides. Can we see them? Sure. All right, so here are the slides. You can kind of see it on the camera. Cool. So that's the projector. This slides in here. Do you want to take it? You're welcome to take it home if you want to. And I have another thing. Let me get it. Okay. This is actually my life history. All of these pictures, those are my kids, and these are taken from the slides. Put them on one of those. That you took with that camera? Yeah. When I was young, and this is my parents, and then the, this is the house where I was born in. This was where my grandmother lived and I was born in my grandmother's house. This is the elephant. Oh, that's the elephant that grabbed you. My twin brother and an older brother, two years older, and a friend of ours, it was during spring break. We okay. hiked, hiked up to the U on the mountain. Then we went across the foothills there and ended up at the Hogel Zoo okay. to look at the animals. And that's the first animal we looked at. And they had bars there that were about that high. And uh, he reached his trunk underneath that bar and grabbed me around the waist <gasps> and pulled me inside. Like in the, the, its area, its enclosure. How many people have been picked up by an elephant? I don't know. It was a circus elephant, so I'm sure that it picked people up before it. Yeah. And her name was Princess Alice. Princess her, Alice was the name of the elephant? <laughs> yes. And this is the house we eventually moved into. On, it was right across the street from the state prison on 21st South. And the interesting thing is, that there was a prisoner on the top floor on the corner. He was always looking out the window and I always waved to him and he waved back. I had no idea who he was or what he was in for. I went on a mission to, to Uruguay. This is my mission call and there were four of us that went on on this ship to go on our mission. You went on, a, you, you took a ship to your mission? Yeah, we took a train from from Salt Lake to Chicago and we had to change trades and we, then we went from Chicago to New York. Your, 
year old camera came out in 1951. Okay. So, so you took that camera on the mission then? Yeah, these are pictures of me on my mission. Visited a cemetery there and they just have some... Wait, is, is that real? Are those real bones? Yes. Really? Yeah. Those are... Re <laughs> All right. And we presented a Book of Mormon to the president of Uruguay. Wow. And there, and there I am. That's amazing. After our mission was completed, we got released by our mission president. So we were free to do anything we wanted. We tore around. So we traveled for six weeks. There That's were four amazing. Of us all over South America, Central America, Mexico, just took our time coming home. Got drafted in the army. Went to Korea. Oh, and this is in uh, Hiroshima. We got to go to Hiroshima where the atomic bomb was dropped. This was in 1950, 1953, and the war ended in 45. So it was eight years after. That's a person that got burned. Wow. Wow. I was stationed on the, the largest air base in South Korea. And this is a little Korean boy that I just, I just love those Korean kids. And whenever we'd go out in the village, they would, they would always, they're always glad to see the soldiers come and visit them. And then I went on R&R &R to Japan. Then I got my discharge. And then I started college at BYU. That's a what, kind of, what kind of car is that? That's a 1949 Chevrolet. It's gorgeous. My wife wrecked it after we got married. Oh no! Maxine. <laughs> <laughs> and I went. I met her, and then got we got married. This is our wedding line and dress. wedding people. Yeah, look at that dress. Amazing. And then our kids started to come. How many? Eight. taught me how to sew and I made this dress. You made that one. Are you serious? Yeah, there's a picture over there. But all of these pictures here were taken, were made from slides. There's my grandpa's life story. I was uh, not expecting this video to be as much about my grandpa as it was going to be about cameras, but isn't that exactly what a camera is for? I mean, we use cameras even today on our phones to record, share, and to remember some of the greatest moments of our lives and sometimes just the things we want to remember. I think it was so amazing to see all of the pictures my grandpa has taken with this camera. I even realized in one of the pictures when he was in Korea, you can see this camera case hanging around his neck. It's so amazing to see these pictures and this camera that created these memories. Now, this next part I think is really cool. I bought some film for this camera and I asked my grandpa if he could show me how to use it. From what I understand, it takes 35 millimeter film, right? Yeah, 35 millimeter film. So. Let's see if I remember this. Okay, then you just load the film in. So here's, here's the film. You just load it in there. I had no idea you could buy this film now. Yeah, I, this is the side that loads it on. Uh-huh. It should be ready to go. Yeah, you, you look through there and you can, That should be it, right? That should be it, yeah. Okay, how cool is that? That picture that my grandpa took is probably the first picture that this camera has taken in over 40 years. I talked to my uncle, my mom, and my grandpa, and they all think that these pictures were probably the last set of pictures 
that this camera has taken in 1975. So I can very confidently say that that picture my grandpa took is the first picture that this camera has taken in over 45 years. I went and got the picture developed. I'm very excited to show it to you. Here it is. Okay, so uh, it doesn't look that great. It's a little washed out, but to be fair, my grandpa hasn't used this camera in over 40 years. And he did say, you'll have to read the manual. So that's exactly what I did. After spending about 30 minutes of reading, I thought I had it figured out. And to my surprise, operating a 70 year old camera was a lot easier than I made it out to be. Now, before we take a picture with this old camera, it's important to understand how a camera actually works. Hey, if you're a nerd like me and already understand how a camera works, you can skip to 1626. I don't want to bore you with something you may already know. If you don't understand how a camera works, however, you may want to stick around. You might learn something really cool that you never knew before. With that being said, back to the show. I mean, my grandpa's camera really isn't any different from this camera I'm filming on right now. This camera just does a lot more work for you, making it easy to take pictures even if you don't know anything about cameras. First, understand that a camera is nothing more than an instrument that collects and records light. For digital cameras, including the camera on your cell phone, light is captured using a sensor. The sensor essentially converts light into ones and zeros or something that a computer can understand. The camera then sends that information to an image processor and the image processor converts that that data back into a picture. On a film camera, light is not collected digitally, but it's collected on film. You see, film is covered with tiny particles called silver halide crystals. Halide crystals. Called silver halide crystals. Halide. Halide. Tiny particles called silver halide crystals. Now, to keep things simple, basically, film forms a chemical reaction with light. Color film has three different layers that react to three different wavelengths of light, red, green, and blue. And you can combine those layers to make a colored image. But that's it, it's a chemical reaction. That's why film comes in these little tubes all rolled up. You see, it's dark inside this tube, light can't get in. If I pulled this film out of this tube, it would be ruined because it would immediately react to the light around it. Anyway, we could dive really deep into how film works, but I'm not going to. If you want to learn more about how film works, Smarter Every Day already made a great video about it. I'll include a link down in the description and you can go watch it. Now there's another important thing to note whether you're taking photos digitally or on film, and that is your ISO. ISO basically determines how sensitive your camera is to light. The higher your ISO number, the more sensitive your camera will be to that light. On a digital camera, you can adjust your light sensitivity with a touch of a button. On a film camera, however, there's no way to change the ISO except by purchasing different film. This film has an ISO of 200. Whereas this film has an ISO of 400. So the 400 ISO film will be more sensitive to light than the 200 ISO film. This means that I can take pictures in darker rooms with the 400 ISO film. However, there are consequences with choosing a higher ISO. You see, the higher you go in ISO, the more feedback or noise you will get in your image. I took this picture, with all the lights in my living room turned on, the ISO is set to 100. I took this picture with all the lights turned off and I set the ISO to 100,000. As you can see, the brightness is relatively the same in each picture. You can see everything, but when you zoom in, you can definitely see that the second image is more grainy. So we've talked about how a camera records light but we still need a way to actually control the light that hits the film or the sensor. This can be done by using the shutter. The shutter controls how long the film or the sensor is exposed to light. The shutter is very simple in that it works by opening or closing. And you can hear the shutter every time you take a picture. The longer the shutter is open, the more light you're going to collect on the film or the sensor. You can use this to take all kinds of neat pictures. When I took this picture, my shutter speed was set to one two thousandth of a second. It's opening and closing in half a millisecond. This is really important when you're wanting to capture fast things like jets. However, for this picture, my shutter speed was 30 seconds 
meaning my shutter was open and letting in light for that entire time. This is great for capturing things like stars. Stars move slowly and they're dim, so I need to let in as much light as possible. The cons of using a fast shutter speed is that you don't collect as much light. So if you're in a dark setting, your pictures might come out pretty dark. If you use a slow shutter speed on the other hand, your pictures might come out too bright or they might be blurry. You can see it in this example. As I move this light up and down and take a picture with a shutter speed of two seconds, you can see that the flashlight I'm holding produces a line, where if I use a fast shutter speed, it's frozen in place. Same thing happens when I'm walking. A slow shutter speed makes me look blurry and ghost-like, whereas a fast shutter speed produces a good image. Oh. One last thing that helps us control light is the aperture. You can think of the aperture as kind of like the pupil in your eye. It can get bigger and smaller. The smaller the aperture, the less light enters the camera. The bigger the aperture, the more light enters. This is called f-stop. The higher your f-stop, the smaller the aperture. For example, this is an f-stop of 22, this is an f-stop of four, and this is an f-stop of two. This is great for controlling light, but it can actually help you adjust the focus for the picture that you're taking. A small f-stop or wide aperture lets you take pictures of your subject, but blurs the background. A high f-stop or small aperture lets you take pictures of your subject, but can help make the background more visible. Okay, that was a lot of info. But now that we understand how this thing actually collects light, we can take a picture with it. We're going to have to load the film onto the camera, so let's do that. The process is pretty simple. All you really have to do is slide off the back, and then the film goes on the left side, and then it stretches over to a spool that's on the right side. After we get the film all loaded up, we can put the back on and then the camera is almost ready to go. Remember what I said earlier about if I pulled this film out of this tube, it would be ruined. You see, that is why I think my grandpa's picture didn't turn out very well because the film that he was using was already exposed to light when we put it into the camera. So in order to avoid that this time, it's important to cycle the camera a couple of times. That film that we stretched over to the other side is unusable. So I'm gonna take a couple of shots. Now we need to set our camera to the right settings. We talked about all that stuff earlier. ISO, exposure, shutter speed. This camera has a very handy tool that I think is awesome. It's this little dial here. It essentially works like an analog computer. That's the coolest thing about this camera, in my opinion, is that everything is analog. It doesn't take batteries. There's no computer. It's all analog. It's all gears and cogs, and it works. 70 years later, it still works, and it's amazing. The first step that we need to do is select our ISO on this dial. Now, the film that I'm using is 200 ISO film. So I'm gonna turn this dial to 200, and that should be all the calibration we need for this little analog computer to work. And this next part is just mind-blowingly cool. I'm gonna open up this little window right here. This is called a light meter, and it basically works like a little solar panel. There's something called a selenium cell inside this light meter. When light hits this selenium cell, it generates a tiny bit of electricity and that electricity powers this little needle on the top of the camera. And when we turn this little analog computer right here, the needle moves. And by looking at the numbers all around this dial, we can determine our shutter and aperture settings. The outer ring is my shutter speed, and the inner ring is my aperture setting. So if I point my camera at this window over here and turn the dial until the needle centers, I can see that I can probably use an aperture of four with a shutter speed of 500. Or I could pick an aperture of 11 and use a shutter speed of 50, or an aperture of eight and use 100. And I can pick any one of those shutter aperture combinations and get a pretty decent picture out of it. Okay, now we're ready to take a picture. Oh wait, there's one more thing we need to talk about, and that is Focus. Focus is really, really important. Otherwise you get pictures and videos kind of like this. And the way that the focus on this camera works is again, really amazing. So you can look through the viewfinder. It's kind of hard to explain. So I made a graphic to show you what it looks like is what you do is you twist the lens until the middle square lines up 
with the outside square. And by doing that, you should be able to get a picture that's in focus. So I'm gonna point the camera at the thing I want to take a picture of. In this case, it's you. And I'm going to turn my dial until the needle centers. By looking at this, I can see I need a shutter speed of 250 and an aperture of two. We have our shutter speed set. We have our ISO set. We have our aperture set. We have our focus set. Let's take the picture. Say cheese. And there you have it. After figuring out this camera, I set out to take some pictures and I gotta say, these pictures have a different feeling than any other picture I've taken in the past. For some reason, the physicality of film gives them more soul and depth. They emanate nostalgia and not only was I able to learn more about this cool camera in the process, but I was also able to form a stronger connection to my grandpa and his story while also writing a story of my own. There you have it. That's how you take a picture with a 70 year old camera. But I don't think this video would be complete without first going to my grandpa's house and showing him the pictures that I took and also taking a picture with him with this camera. This is what I wanted to show you right here. I figured out how to use it and these are the pictures that I took. Oh, those are nice pictures. You took that with? Yeah, with your camera. Those are nice, yeah. I was able to, I spent about a half hour reading the manual and I, I was hoping I could jog your memory a little bit and then we could take a picture together. I'm gonna put the timer on, I'm gonna sit next to you and we'll take a picture together. We'll get it, are you ready? I'm ready. And there we go. There it went. Okay. There it went. Yeah. Well, I think that's a wrap. I'm going to finish taking the pictures I still have left on this film, and then I'm gonna go get these pictures developed. And I think that picture I took with my grandpa, I'm going to enjoy for a very long time. That's what I love about photography. Something about putting an image in a tiny little window and then having it forever. It's just astounding. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have made it this far, I sincerely appreciate you. If you found this video interesting, please consider subscribing and sharing this video, or at the very least, please leave a like or a comment. It really means a lot to me. If you want to see the video I made last month, you can click on the link in the description or somewhere on the screen. You mean so much to me, and I will see you on the next adventure.